few better matches in the automotive world than uh, Mazda MX-5 and uh, Twisty Mountain Road. These two go so well together that I'm struggling to even find a proper comparison. The Mazda MX-5 and the Twisty Mountain Road go as well together as french fries do with uh, burgers. There, I think that does it justice. The Mazda MX-5 is now in its fourth generation and uh, this particular uh, version or generation has been around for about six years now but it still looks fresh it still drives very well and Mazda didn't really need to uh, change it too much in order to uh, to keep it relevant there is not a single other vehicle on the market that can match the MX-5 sure you could compare it to a, a mini or a Fiat 500 convertible but those uh, are front-wheel drive vehicles and of the two only the Mini is any fun to drive really. So the vehicle that I'm driving today is a Takumi uh, trim level vehicle. It has the 2 liter engine which in 2018 was updated and its power output was increased from 160 to 183 horsepower or 184 and that comes in at 7,000 RPM, 205 newton meters of torque that is delivered at 4,000 RPM. The result is a vehicle that can sprint to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.5 seconds. And it's very sprightly. It weighs just under 1.1 tons or just over 1.1 tons with a driver inside and this vehicle offers an unparalleled driving experience and I mean this because you can't really get any very light and tossable rear-wheel drive vehicles these days if any and even if you could get these vehicles they would most likely have a small displacement turbocharged engine not a bigger non-turbo like this 2 liter in the Mazda and I think driving a car with such an engine is a bit of a treat these days because it's a dying breed obviously the best way you can enjoy a Mazda MX-5 is with its top down and in fact I don't think anyone's around I'm going to show you how easy it is to put the top down so let's just put this back oh yeah let's see the price tag so this vehicle my tester costs uh, where is it 32,820 euros VAT included so the way you drop the top you pull on this uh, release here then click it into place in the back and that's literally it I honestly don't understand why Mazda also sells a Targa version with an electric uh, folding hardtop that adds weight and complication and you get a, quite a bit of wind buffeting behind your head here when you drive that with the top down and there's really nothing wrong with this top and if you want to put it up it literally takes a second you can do it on the move done then you have to close the windows obviously I love that this vehicle is quite a pared down, no frills kind of thing, even this fairly well specced example that I'm driving today. But you still get uh, climate control, aircon, uh, decent navigation system, uh, leather wrapped steering wheel that's especially thin, by the way. This is, has to be the, the thinnest uh, steering wheel that I've ever tried. I think it's deliberately made extra thin to uh, give you the feeling of driving a classic British sports car roadster thing which this still tries to uh, imitate you also get cruise control that's not adaptive I don't think it is this one also has heated seats um, it has autonomous emergency braking for the city uh, optional parking sensors in the rear as well as a rear reversing camera although to be fair you don't really need it in this vehicle you can just drop the top and look over your shoulder and 
you'd have to be a very very bad driver to um, to still hit something this car also has the optional BBS wheels but it's lacking the optional sport seats that I think would make a huge difference I'm not a huge fan of these uh, standard seats I don't think they offer enough lateral support I don't have a problem with the fact that they are not uh, height adjustable although you can uh, adjust the angle of the base if you want so yeah I think that's literally all the features in this car it has a uh, shortcut for the navigation for the infotainment which when you're on the move in all Mazdas um, is no longer a touch screen so you can't prod the screen you have to use the controls and that is pretty much it I'm looking around looking around you have cup holders here not the best placement but I guess they were um, constrained by the level of space inside this vehicle the trunk is very small too it's hundred and thirty liters but it's fine for a weekend trip away with a special someone being a convertible obviously you get um, some road and wind noise inside the vehicle even with the top uh, up like for instance let's see how much of a difference there is I think you can still hear me fairly okay you don't get that much wind buffeting in the Roadster MX-5 I think even at higher speeds I drove this on the on the highway at 130 or 140 kilometers per hour and it was more than bearable I just felt the wind brushing my the top of my head it's such a treat to drive one of these uh, Mazda MX-5 nothing nothing drives like it I think that's why you buy it this is not a vehicle for posers it's not that expensive and you won't really impress people with your wealth or status if you roll up in this and I don't think it really impresses enthusiasts that much because it's not a pure sports car because it has soft suspension relatively small and mushy brakes and not that much power or structural rigidity so it's slightly compromised in the ways uh, roadsters usually are like I'm sure if uh, Mazda did uh, a factory hardtop version of this, a coupe, I think that would uh, drive even better because it would be stiffer. The body would have more uh, torsional rigidity and that improves handling. But the thing is, I did drive this vehicle on this road quite quickly earlier today. But I think the MX-5's uh, party trick is that you don't have to drive it at... Um, 10 tenths you can just cruise around enjoy the amazing gear shift blip the throttle on downshifts and then when you can occasionally you don't have to do it on every bit of straight road but when you can slip it into a lower gear and try to reach the 7500 rpm red line And listen to the engine sing. This Mazda 2 liter Sky Active has a fairly high uh, compression ratio and it just sounds uh, raspy and racy and quite enjoyable, I think. And unlike the 1.5 liter that kind of lacks mid range torque, you can just slip this in fourth, fifth, and it still pulls. Even sixth, you don't have a problem with uh, its acceleration level.
Oh yeah. And when you really lean on this vehicle, you do start to notice that the suspension is relatively soft actually, it's not bone shaking. And um, even when you think you're at the limit of grip, if you uh, take your foot off the gas and just apply more steering lock, the vehicle will correct its line. It's, um, it has to be one of the most maneuverable and controllable vehicles for driving quickly that I've ever driven. The pedals are perfectly placed for heel and toe. And one of the joys of driving this vehicle is flipping the, the throttle. I'm really curious what Mazda will replace this vehicle with because I don't think they will be able to keep selling it in its current form. I'm sure they will still offer some small sports car. Mazda doesn't do turbocharged engines. Maybe an EV, but an EV would um, kind of ruin part of the formula, which is to keep the vehicle light. I mean, if you made this vehicle an EV with a comparable performance, it would weigh probably around 1.5 tons and not under 1.1. As things stand, the MX-5 is an experience. If you've never driven one, regardless of generation, uh, you should. It's amazing. It's, there's nothing like it. There's really nothing, nothing on the market like it. I guess the, the car that would come closest is like the Toyota GD86, but you don't uh, have the limitless headroom that you do in, uh, in the Mazda. It's not the kind of car you... Um, you buy with your head, but it actually makes sense as a daily if you want to drive it in town. Yeah, maybe access inside is not the easiest because it's super low and whatever, but it's very small, it's very maneuverable. You can very easily place the car both on a twisty road and in town traffic. It's perfectly civilized on the open road. Uh, it has Plenty of creature comforts, even heated seats, which are excellent, so you could keep driving this in winter, I guess. I'm a fan, I've always been a fan, and I think this latest MX-5 is the best one they've ever made. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.